Okay guys, so it's getting late at night, but we are going to go ahead and start this video. Today we're going to be doing a subwoofer install on Victor's 2008 Dodge Avenger. Now, he's heard my car and he's very, very jealous of it and he wants his own system. <laughs> You're not wrong. So he went out and bought him some subs. They're pretty sweet looking. He's got, we got some Kicker Comp VRs here. Pretty nice box that fits in here nice and flush. We didn't actually have to build one, I thought we were, but we do not. Two of those, two 12s, just like I've got. We got a ramp up here. Where? It is a 750 watt Kicker ZX 750.1. Um, we're not 100% sure if this amp is going to push these subs correctly yet. That may change later on. But, and not just are we doing subwoofers, we're also doing a whole new set of components. So, we picked these up from a junkyard for five bucks a pop. Uh, these are some duels. They're going to go in here. They're going to make it sound a little bit better. Not, I mean, not flawless, but they'll sound pretty good once we're done with it. And then, we've got all our component wiring. Now, he's wanting to stick with his factory head unit. So, in order to do that, we have to install one of these. This is a line output converter. So, that'll be down the road. We also have a base knob so that we can control our base level nice and easy. And then, obviously, our basic amp wires. If you'd like to know more about the kit and what comes in it, I have another video that I'll leave a link in the description for. And it goes through the entire process of installing a sub, everything that comes with the amp, and all of that. So, yeah guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run our power wire back here so that we can hook in our amp. And we're going to go from there. So we'll see you guys whenever the power wire run. Alright guys, so we have our fish pulled out here. Now, this was actually technically simpler than my car. Because right there behind the master cylinder and in between the strut housing you may not be able to see it it's kind of hard to see but there's a little corner down there all right and there's a factory grommet that doesn't do anything so what we did is we actually found it by coming under here okay guys so right there you can see where we have our fish ran right there and that's going to come through in that little corner that i just showed you where the master cylinder is at so yeah it's a factory grommet you can see our wires through it right there and yeah, okay, that's, that's all I'm going to show with this. I hope you guys understand. <sighs> this is pain. Now, you don't really need to do a lot. You don't have to sit here and tape the crap out of it. A couple spins will do it. I mean, we're not really pulling through a lot, so. Okay guys, so this is the grommet, uh, you can't see it because the lighting's awful, I'm going to set it right here again, uh, that's the grommet right there, I'm going to be cutting a plus pattern in this, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set the light right at you, ha, ah, no that sucks, but uh, well, you guys might be able to see what I'm doing, I figure if I can see it, you can see it, maybe that's not a good idea, but... All right. That ought to do the trick. And, uh, yeah. And if we need any more weatherproofing, then we can just tape it up. We might actually just go ahead and tape it up in there anyway for some extra seal. So, all right, guys. So, the next part is going to be to cut off a small piece of this for our fuse so we're gonna go ahead and do that now okay so I always cut off more than I need because um, first off I cut off this okay as you can see the difference this is now practically useless so oh well um, but cut off this much this will go from the battery to the fuse and as you can see I cut off a very small piece of wire this is about a two foot piece of wire not, that's not two feet well maybe like a foot it's like a foot of wire and that's going to go from here to the fuse, and then the rest of it will go from the fuse to the amp. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to solder our things on. That are, You guys don't talk about, it's going to eye terminal because we're bolting it right here to these jump plates. Because we don't want to deal with this battery. It's underneath the wheel, and you have to take out the headlight. And Not necessarily, but it makes it easier. It makes it easier to do it off of this. Yeah. And I think it'll work just fine off of this because this is basically a feed directly from the battery. So it should work just I mean, fine. This is that is a feed directly from so the battery. I mean, we that's, how I, that's how I jump my car. Right. So we shouldn't have any issues. But we're gonna go ahead and make up our things while we still have the light uh, before we disconnect 
the uh, negative battery terminal because anytime you're working with 12 volts, you want to disconnect the battery terminal. Now, I always disconnect the ground because if it touches the frame, it's, it's just grounding to nothing. So, you don't have anything to worry about. Okay, guys. So, if you'll notice, this thing's actually kind of small. Now, it won't actually go over the bolt hole for the battery terminal. So, what I've got here is I've got a drill. And we're going to just drill it out. A little bit bigger. Now, I've got a pair of pliers here to hold it in place while I drill it. Oh, well, that went over well. Um, but, yeah, this one's kind of a pain. I had to do this on my ground in my other one. Um, basically we're going to run this wire right here and basically we're just tucking it under these trim panels. So, it's going to be different for every car so I'm not going to talk a lot about this. And we're just going to go ahead and do it. So. Alright guys, so I am cutting this video into sections. Uh, right now we've got our, our power wire ran from the battery and our base knob ran. Now, I didn't actually show the mounting of the base knob. But we mounted it right there. And basically it comes with a little bracket that you mount to it and then we basically routed our wire behind there that's a pretty big pain but we got it mounted it's out of the way now uh, the last thing that we're going to do for the last part of this video is we're going to be mounting the ground now the closest screw that we can find or bolt is this seat bolt screw right here if I can get you a good shot of it without the carpet being in the way okay there this bolt right here now uh, if you don't know how the seats are bolt, that's probably going to be, it actually is kind of difficult on these. Um, basically, the bottom part of the seat pops up, and then you can access the bolts for this. Um, so it's really not that bad. Anyways, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to have to drill it out again. So, yeah. Alright guys, so as you can see right here, we are going to be mounting it. Uh, and I cleaned up all this around the area, so we should have a good ground connection. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the seats back, bolt everything back in, and we should be good to go. The only thing that we have to do now is connect this to the amp, and that's super easy. So, Alright guys, I want to thank you very much for watching part one of this subwoofer build. Uh, I'm actually recording this inside because we ran out of time over there. It started raining and stuff. We had to pack up and leave. But yeah, we got the power in, we got the ground in, and we got our base knob brand. And that's pretty much all that we wanted to do for this episode of it. So, uh, this is part one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.